I'm the mayor of Washington, D.C., and I'm here to provide a um, brief update on the district's response to COVID-19. Um, today uh, will be a relatively short um, briefing. Uh, in next week, we have a number of very important um, things um, to share with you during this time. Monday, I will be presenting the D.C. Council the fiscal 2021 budget. And on Thursday, uh, I will provide an update on the reopen DC advisory group report. And on Friday, we expect um, to talk more about uh, summer activities. Uh, I am joined by members of my administration, Polly Donaldson, the director of DHCD, uh, John, Faltic John Falchicchio, the deputy mayor for planning and economic development, Chris Rodriguez, the director of Homeland Security, and Christy Whitfield, I'm the director of the D.C. Department of Small and Local Businesses. I want to share with you where we are with data today. Uh, 135 uh, new cases of COVID-19 uh, reported, bringing our total number of cases to 6,871. Uh, and sadly, uh, 368 D.C. residents have lost their lives to this uh, virus. Uh, we are also showing uh, the numbers of days uh, on the right side of that graph uh, in each uh, number of cases reported on that day. Uh, here you can also see an update to the metrics that we are following uh, in order to move into the first phase of reopening. Uh, you can see uh, that we are reporting five days of decline in community spread, uh, as well as uh, three days of uh, a transmission rate below where we expect to see it. Uh, and we are also uh, letting you know where we are with testing, uh, including um, the ability to test in the four um, priority testing areas. Uh, our hospital capacity is uh, at 76 percent of normal hospital um, capacity, uh, which means that we are below the 80 percent uh, mark for a number of days. Uh, finally, we are um, continuing to build our contact tracing um, force, including the IT infrastructure and making critical hires to get that force up and running. So we will continue to talk to you uh, about those metrics as we move towards uh, phase one uh, reopening. I also want to mention uh, that we are continuing to share information around the use of masks and face coverings. We know that for most people uh, in our city wearing masks is new, me included, and it's taken some time to get used to. Uh, you will try many masks and you will find the one that you like and the one um, that uh, makes sense for you. But we know that wearing non-medical masks can help stop the spread of COVID-19. So asymptomatic and pre-symptomatic people can spread the virus. This virus can spread between people interacting in close proximity through speaking, coughing, or sneezing. So please, because of what public health experts tell us is that wearing face coverings, we can blunt the spread of the virus. And as we um, uh, approach a reopening, uh, it's very important uh, that we continue to remember um, that wearing a mask helps blunt the, the spread of the virus, but continue to practice social distancing where possible uh, and continue to frequently uh, wash your hands. Also, uh, it goes without saying, but I'll say it anyway, that if you're sick, stay home, um, because none of this works if you're, you're out uh, sick and spreading um, the virus. So please, uh, wear a mask. Uh, so I, I, should, I should say more, uh, that we in, um, I'm on slide five, we are 
I signed a mayor's order last week requiring the, uh, the use of masks in essential businesses, on public transit, and in ride share. Uh, and you, this message was emphasized this week as well uh, with DC Metro also requiring um, the, the use of masks on all Metro property. So begin um, to pay close attention to all of those places, um, but wear a mask uh, when you're out. I also uh, have an update to the program that we announced on Wednesday, uh, our pilot program for educational and academic retail shops pilot. Uh, and this will allow businesses that sell educational items to apply for a waiver to the non-essential business uh, prohibition uh, to do curbside and front door pickup. So today those applications will be uh, available. They will go live at 1 p.m. Um, they include business categories um, for bookstores, art supply stores, music shops, toy stores, as well as those selling office supplies. It's not on that slide, but and it also includes office supplies. So um, those applications are available uh, at 1 p.m. They're very simple. Um, if you uh, apply today, we're going to do our best to turn it around um, very quickly. I also want to update on another program we created to support uh, our small businesses. Uh, in late April, we made funds available through the DC Small Business Micro Grant Program. And some of these uh, additional funds came from the Community Development Block Grant, a federal program, which are administered by DHCD and targeted for businesses in Ward 7 and 8. And today I want to share that funding is still available for small businesses in Ward 7 and 8, and we will open uh, the applications for the second round of grants on Wednesday the 20th, and the businesses will have until May the 29th uh, to apply. So if you are a small business in Ward 7 and 8 that didn't apply for a grant during the first round in the micro grants program, make sure you do um, beginning May 20th through May 29th. So with that, um, we'll take any questions. Questions? Questions? Okay. Amanda Gomez. Amanda Hi, Gomez. Hi. Thank yes. you so much for, for, hello, can you hear me, ma'am? Yes. Okay. Uh, hi. Thank you so much. Uh, I have I have two questions. Uh, the first, um, can you uh, my read of of the mayoral order from Wednesday was that uh, everyone uh, wear masks uh, for for uh, or face coverings uh, except for three groups you you highlighted. Um, and so I, I guess was can you just uh, clarify because it, it looks like that's not the case and I did I, I believe that's why other people would just read it. Re yeah. yeah, just refer to the statement I just made. In Washington, D.C., you're required right. to wear a mask in essential businesses on public transit and in ride shares. I guess I wonder why, why not require everyone to wear face coverings if that helps uh, slow the spread, if it blunts the spread of the virus. Uh, we are, uh, my recommendation to everyone is if you are in any place where you can't six foot distance, you're not sure you should wear a mask, uh, but this is the requirement. Okay. Um, and my second question is um, about the reopen metrics. Um, so on during your, your virtual town hall on uh, the reopen DC advisory group on April 23rd, I know you released like 11 metrics the administration was considering before moving to phase one. Um, one metric included, uh, for example, uh, the positivity rate. So like, can you provide more insight in how, into how you decided on these four metrics? Um, and if they could change. Uh, these uh, metrics were designed by the DC Department of Health uh, and they are intended to let us know uh, the, the level of community spread and how it is uh, decreasing in the city uh, as well as our ability uh, to test and trace uh, and the ability of our hospital system to be able to accommodate uh, new cases, especially acutely uh, ill people uh, suffering from, from the virus. Do 
do you anticipate these metrics to change at all uh, as, as they had, or are these the metrics we're sticking with for a phase one? Uh, if the Department of Health uh, recommends some, something additional, I don't know um, that I expect that they would, but as they follow the progression of this virus or hopefully the diminution of this virus, if they recognize something that they need to call to our attention, we certainly would uh, consider it. Okay, Martin DeCaro. Hello, Mayor Bowser. It's Martin DeCaro at Bloomberg. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. I have a question for you about two matters that I'd like for you to please address. I spoke to Council Member Che this morning. She has sent the administration a letter asking for an answer about a couple of matters. One is when your administration might start assessing roads that can be closed so restaurants can have more outdoor seating when they begin to allow customers back. And number two, when the city might start moving on building some more protected bike lanes because we know that mass transit, taxi cabs, and Ubers are not going to return quickly. Uh, public confidence needs to be restored before anyone wants to stand on a crowded bus again. But people might be looking for bicycles uh, to get around town as commerce resumes. So one, outdoor seating for restaurants using road space, and number two, bike lanes. Um, our DDOT is undergoing um, those reviews now, and I haven't seen the councilwoman's letter, but I'll certainly uh, take a look at it. Is this a priority for you, Your Honor? Yes. Can you elaborate, please? Uh, I, I think I answered your question, Martin, that as we are looking at all of our reopened scenarios, and I think you know we have established 11 sector groups uh, to evaluate how, how we reopen and how businesses come back, particularly hard hit businesses and those that may be in later phases of reopening, uh, we want to be able uh, to support our city reopening in a sustainable way, but in a way that also brings back our economic vibrancy. Um, and so um, those things are uh, sometimes, um, they re require some balance uh, in considering all of those things. So uh, DDOT is certainly engaged in that thinking. Megan, NBC4. Good morning, Mayor. It's Megan Fitzgerald, NBC4. Yes. Um, two questions, and forgive me if I missed your response. I heard a little bit of it, but if you could just kind of clarify why there seems to be so much confusion as it relates to that face mask policy. Um, I don't believe it was. It, I don't believe it came up in the briefing on Wednesday, but it then was in the press release. But then there was, you know, us trying to get some more clarity to exactly what it entailed. Sure. And then also, if you could uh -huh. elaborate a little bit more about um, what people can expect on Monday for this pilot program for when these bookstores will open up. What, what's the, um, I guess, thought process behind opening up bookstores and how will it be uh, conducted so it's safe for the public? Sure. So on the face mask, uh, you mentioned that it was in our press release, but not mentioned in the press conference. And uh, it may be hard to believe, but it was simply an oversight on my part. Um, and so it was uh, all of the information you needed was included uh, in the press release. So that's that's the answer to that question. Um, the second part of your question was on the pilot and what people can expect. Uh, we uh, once we uh, read uh, how businesses uh, are proposing uh, to um, to do the curbside pickup, I think I could answer you more fully. Um, but what residents should should expect is that they uh, interact uh, with the business. They may have a website. They may have a way to call in. Uh, and they should be able to um, pay and pick up their supplies either virtually 
or at the door or at the curb. Um, so that, those are our general expectations, um, but we know that the entrepreneurs know best how their operations will work for their customers, and we expect them to include that information in their waiver application. Uh, and then we can make more specifics available then. Uh, but people should call um, the, the businesses. We will list the approved waivers so you know uh, who is operating and where they're operating. Eliana? Hi there, this is Eliana Block with WUSA9. Um, I had a quick question because it was my understanding that restaurant employees are required to wear masks. Um, I wanted to know if that includes those involved in food preparation in the kitchen. I asked because um, there's some distinctions in other areas. Thank you. Sure. Can I um, have my team just clarify what part of the re what part of the um, restaurant is covered, if not all part, because it is an essential business. Sure. So, uh, Mayor, for uh, any essential business, the employees are uh, required to wear a mask uh, or face covering. Uh, and so, for restaurants, whether they're in the uh, front doing the helping with the curbside uh, pickup or the grab and go. Uh, employees would have to wear it, and if they're in the kitchen, uh, they would also have to uh, wear uh, a mask as well. Hi, I'm Mary Bowser. Um, I wanted to ask about the uh, earlier round of micro grants. You said that 7,000 businesses applied. Do you know how many of those were actually able to get funding? Sure. Sure. So for the micro grant program, there was uh, 7,331. Uh, applications uh, and so what we've done is we've gone through a process uh, by which we're notifying uh, the applicants uh, there were about 3,069 individuals who applied uh, and they have notifications and are connected with uh, CDFI in order to get uh, their award uh, there's also uh, about uh, uh, 2,400 businesses that were approved uh, and got a grant notification uh, and they have to verify some information with the CDFIs in order to get their award. Uh, there was also a good number of businesses that needed to provide a little bit more information in order to complete their application. And so we're in the process of working with the businesses, the CDFIs, uh, and DEMPED's business development unit to make sure that we get through uh, each of the uh, applications that was incomplete so that they can get an award. Uh, and we hope to have that process wrapped up uh, this month uh, so that we know uh, how much funding was allocated to each individual business and be able to give a better sense of where that money was allocated uh, across the district. So just to clarify, that's 3,000 independent contractors plus 2,400 businesses? Uh, yes, and then the remainder would be the ones that are the incompletes uh, that need to give us some more information. So the, but the, the number of independent contractors, that number won't change. Uh, that's 3,069. Uh, we have also seen, I should mention, a couple of businesses that were uh, given an award notification who actually declined. Uh, they said that they've made a pivot or have adapted uh, and they won't be accepting the award. So we have that uh, kind of bucket as well. So there's a couple different scenarios uh, with 7,331 award notifications going out. You can imagine there's a whole plethora of it. Well, the one thing we do want to urge is for businesses who did get a notification that their application was incomplete, uh, we do want to hear from them. And it's important that we hear from them so that we can get their uh, application turned around uh, and turn that incomplete notification into a uh, award notification. All right. Thank you, everybody.